Good morning. Today is Sunday, May 3rd, 2020, and it's 11, 11 a.m. here in Pasadena, California. Here is the update for this past week. So we have had both uh, investment interest in, in CWH, the holding company, from insiders, uh, people already in, inside the company, existing stockholders, and we received an unsolicited request from a potential new league partner. So that's something new. Uh, we're working right now on the final details of the XFL uh, proposal. We want to get that to them inside of bankruptcy to see if we can't uh, pull them out of bankruptcy. We've been working on that a few weeks now, and we're down to the last few pieces and the contacts that we want to reach out to. Um, I still have AFL here as a note, but that's definitely a much lower priority at this point. XFL is first, so we're going to be getting that out. Uh, here in the next uh, few days. Next week, it should be next week. So we've got about uh, seven or eight proposals out right now. That's that's where it stands. Interesting story, uh, actually kind of surprising story that the Bundesliga, which if you're familiar with soccer, uh, they are uh, saying that they're months away from insolvency, which is really pretty fascinating. Uh, we did send out a proposal to a gentleman who has holdings in the Bundesliga, but that had taken place before this news came out. Uh, so that proposal is in his hands. We'll see where that goes. Uh, we're gaining YouTube subscribers uh, for the first time in a long time. So that's an interesting thing to note. Um, DraftKings IPO uh, was pretty much flat. It was down the first few days of trading last week, which are the critical days. And then it pretty much ended up flat. Uh, the guidance that I'm seeing from stock uh, analysts is overweight so far, which means they say it's overvalued. They are going to be releasing their earnings uh, on the 15th of May, so that'll be very interesting. A blank check IPO seem to be a thing now. Um, this is premature for us at this point. Our focus is still the order book. Remember that we need to prove the market, prove the, the, the business model, and then th this is a self-solving problem. But it is on the table as something to look at. Um, as a potential route for us. So uh, nothing else to say now other than we're keeping an eye on it. Uh, we've gone from the lowest unemployment in, in a very long time to the highest unemployment in a very uh, probably since the Great Depression. I expect to see the numbers north of 20% in the next reporting period and then north 30% in the following reporting period. So that's where we're headed, unfortunately. Um, just looking through statistics, on NewSportsEconomy.com, I was surprised to find that we've had, since that site's been up, we've had 43,000 unique visitors to the NewSportsEconomy.com, which has been up uh, more than 10 years now. Uh, that's sort of the archive of all of our um, historical information. I kind of refer to it as the Library of Congress for us. The other site, which is a much lighter site, is the NewSportsEconomy.org. Uh, which is in need of an update, but it, it, it does have most of the main points there that we want to get out in a simplified form. So you're starting to see cannabis class action lawsuits by shareholders. That's not a surprise. That market has really gone down considerably. Here in California, it's, um, it's in bad shape, so it doesn't surprise me. It's amazing how quickly people will turn on you, but I personally witnessed the same thing, so what surprise? Not, not a surprise there. 70% um, of the gig economy is unemployed, and since about half of the economy is gig employees, that means 35%. Just do the math. Uh, I'm on record with that number about six weeks ago, so now you're starting to see reporting at that range. And as I said earlier in the call, uh, present reporting is saying 20. They're being very uh, dishonest. Uh, it's, it's, it's 30, 35% right now. Uh, Macau gambling opens up. Uh, it's actually down 97%. 97%. Now, why is this important? It's important because Macau shut down earlier. It's a gambling hotspot. Shut down earlier and then reopened and nobody showed up. Um, this pretends very poorly for Las Vegas, the flagship of gambling. Uh 3% of the people returned. Uh, Macau is a big thing. Look it up on your own. You'll see this is the case. So I'm standing on the claim that this, this entire uh, downturn is not only just going to hurt them in the short term, but it's going to hurt them permanently. 
And Macau is currently the flagship example of, of returning to market and nobody shows up. Vegas APs piece on social distancing. So uh, all the commentary on the news stories and uh, is bad. Uh, trying to explain to people, and I already said this before, that you're, you're going to be spacing slot machines uh, six feet apart, craps tables six feet apart. Um, this just doesn't, doesn't comport with how Vegas operates. And also the math behind all of this, you're losing about half of your floor space uh, which is half your profitability. That's even assuming anybody shows up. Um, yeah, it's all bad. Um, ASM lives, gambling dies. ASM lives, gambling dies. Uh, everybody's been sent to their, this is kind of a funny comment that I saw, but I agree with it. Uh, everybody's been sent to their room to look at what they've done to the planet. There's some pretty remarkable stories out there in terms of wildlife and fishery, you know, fish, fish returning and all kinds of water creatures. And I just saw a story this morning. Uh, I think it was flamingos that were returning to some, the country. I mean, all kinds of rapid uh, change in the, in the wildlife. Uh, now that we're not moving around and polluting and doing all the things that we do, uh, how it just shows how fast the earth can recover when we stop screwing it up. Zoomification of the economy. So, yeah, I think there's a burnout. What I'm seeing is that everybody wants to have a Zoom video conference and invite everybody to their Zoom. Look, you if you don't have a value proposition, just because you have a Zoom video conference doesn't mean somebody should show up for it. I think there's an overexposure going on here right now and, and burnout as a result. Um, you know, spending all day long on, on video conferences. I personally have been on several of them that are, you know, it's basically the same information over and over again, which smacks to me as self-promotion. You just want me to show up so, so you can tell people that you have an audience and you say the same things over and over again. That's not going to work, okay? Everybody has a limited amount of time to dedicate to these things. You need to provide a lot of value um, to the to the audience that they can use in their in their lives, or you're going to lose your audience. It's it's not to gain eyeballs so that you can say you have people watching your video conference. So I do think that that is being overdone right now, overexposed, and you're going to see backlash. And it, it's going to have to be like anything, you know. If there's no value for the audience, uh, and at this point, it's got to be a lot of value a lot of value, then you're going to, you're not going to have people show up more than once or twice because nobody can afford that. And, and sitting all day long and going zoom conferences, zoom conferences, zoom conferences, just nobody wants to live like that. Um, Major league baseball pitching a configuration to possibly open up uh, late June or look like July 4th. It's a really goofy configuration. Um, this would be without any, uh, anybody in the stands. Uh, again, I, I don't think it's going to work. I think they're pushing it. I don't think the protocols can be put in place to ensure safety of the players and all of that. So I think that's uh, wishful thinking. Uh, when, so I, on Friday, I had the first face-to-face uh, -face video conference from uh, one of the leagues interested in, in proceeding. Uh, it's a women's basketball league. That's as much as I'm going to say here. Uh, it is, uh, is, it's very serious. It's, it's no joke. Um, it was about an hour long. I spoke with the general manager. I've also spoke with the, uh, the on this video call in previous communications. I've dealt with the commissioner. Um, they want to proceed. They want to be number one. They want to proceed. Um, we're actually finalizing the, the documents that they requested from us right now. I expect to transmit that early next week. And um, I was asked on their own, not, not through my uh, mentioned, I said nothing about it. And in fact, it came up several times during the video conference that were we taking investment in the company itself? It, it, that surprised me, really surprised me that that happened. Um, and so I did say, yes, we have a private placement open and I'll be providing that along with the, uh, the documents they requested. But uh, they, I, we went through everything, um, history, everything, and very, very, very interested in proceeding. Very smart questions. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. We've, like I said, we've got six or seven of them out right now. 
Um, but this is the first time that I've actually had a video conference with the with the um, interested uh, parties, the decision makers. So it's looking really good. Um, NFL. So it we'll see uh, if if there's you know. Fauci says not likely this year. Fall is is going to recur. I, I know that frustratingly the non-scientists, politicians are fighting with the scientists. I'm sorry, the scientists get my attention. Politicians are full of shit. So the the point here is, is that it is most likely to recur in the fall. Um, all of the science points that direction. I think it's going to be tough. Uh, the only real prospect for return, I think, is NFL in the fall, and, and even that is tentative based upon um, the science and the ability to to do the necessary, um, put in the necessary protocols to protect the players uh, between now and the time is clicking off pretty fast. So I think it's about a coin toss at this point, um, whether NFL appears in the fall. I think it's pretty close to 50-50. Story came out about the large capacity office buildings. Not Looks like there's not a future there or it's being questioned. I, I'm on record on that six, seven weeks ago saying that's going to be a casualty. Um, companies are realizing that not only do they not need these buildings, public perception, I, I covered this already, public perception about work at home is gone, cost structures way down as a result of working at home. People that I know that work at home, I pulled a few of my friends and they're actually getting more work done at home than they got done at the office. So I think that that, that move is on. So, you know, skyscrapers aren't going to have the future they had. And, and any sort of large capacity office building. Uh, international slow pitch softball, that's an inquiry that I received. Actually, it was two on the same day. Um, this was the second one on the same day. 500 TSA agents infected, um, that's a huge warning sign. Um, you know, it, yeah, that stands on its own. 500 TSA agents infected with COVID-19, that story came out just a couple days ago. All right, so airborne COVID-19. So it looks like that it's possible, I, I would say it's probable that it's airborne. Um, that, that means it can be anywhere. I personally think it is everywhere already. I, I think that that's already the case. Um, but, you know, that, that increases the danger substantially. I mean, basically, you know, if this thing wants to get you, it's going to get you. Um, obviously, you don't want to put yourself deliberately in places where you know that it's airborne and, and come in close contact. But that means even if you walk in a grocery store with your mask on, uh, it's, you're, in a, you know, you're in a building with 100 people, 200 people, um, it, you know, your eyes are still not covered. So, you know, I've said before that your tear ducts actually are, are, are the, are the, are the most sensitive area, even more so than your respiratory system. So, you know, are you going to walk in there with goggles on too? Um, GDP down 40 to 50 per 45. I saw a reputable uh, source. I think it was Bloomberg down 45. I said it, the economy is going to be cut in half. I said that almost right at the moment the lockdown started. So that's six, seven weeks ago. Unemployment numbers at 30 million. Uh, it's going to get to 50 million. It's already at 30 million. It's going to get to 50 million. Biggest drop in consumer spending ever recorded. Makes sense. Uh, no surprises there. Lots of government jobs being cut. Also, no surprise there. Um, very interesting to see how this presidential election shapes up in a quarantine. Uh, this is truly a never done before situation. No conventions, no in-person rallies. Uh, at least not anybody that has a brain is going to attend one of those. Uh, you know, this is a really bizarre situation we find ourselves in. And presidential election being one of the, I mean, if not the most important public event that happens every four years, um, however this shapes up is going to change many things, not just how elections are handled, but it's going to ripple through the whole society in, in terms of what societal norms and expectations are and these kinds of things. It's just it's mind boggling. Um, NASCAR goes first. So NASCAR looks like they're going to go with, uh, May 17. 
very interesting test case. This is one to uh, to keep a very very close eye on. Uh, it's it's you know it's not a sport where you have physical contact and all that. It's in cars, and I get that. Um, but you know, yeah, it, this is good. This is something to watch. Uh, I think there's there's lessons for us in this, and there's there's lessons for for the society at large in what happens here. Um, it is different than a team sport where you have physical contact, obviously, because you you know metal boxes running around in circles, not the same thing as human beings crashing into each other and sweating on each other and all the rest of that stuff. So well, we'll see where that goes. Uh, I'm going to put together a uh, I'm going to try to do what I did with this um, general manager of the Women's Basketball League. I'm going to try to do that uh, to just to the camera here to see if I can can our uh, league pitch. Uh, in a generic form and, and, and put that out because that will do the work of uh, the reason being I, I this is the first time I've had a face-to-face -face meeting with a real prospect uh, prior prior have been by phone call and so forth so this is the first one in a video conference and it was very effective so that tells me that you know traveling around and getting on airplanes and staying in hotel rooms and using all that capital and time is not necessary this truly does work um, and because I got the same kind of reaction that I've seen in other presentations I've done in person, it was the same. So I'm going to try to can that in a video and, and then use that as a tool to recruit and act, you know, go back to our leads that haven't yet responded and give them that along with a physical generic presentation. Um, and I think that will do the job or it's going to help considerably. So I'm going to, I'm going to work on that and get that out next week. Um, got another media inquiry that came in on Friday. So uh, that's two. American Airlines price target is $1. Um, just leave that there. I think it speaks for itself. Women's soccer suit uh, loses the pay. There's a there's a, a just recent story about women's soccer losing a pay equity fight. I think this is totally not cool. Uh, the inequity that exists here is 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 not right. Uh, this is a this is an ongoing thing. But they got a negative a negative ruling here last week. Okay, so trying to wrap this up quickly, um, this moment in time, you know, uh, every day I'm getting more uh, active reach outs and conversations that are uh, where dormant are coming back alive. You know, the the marketplace is we've run into the need. You know, the whole thing of needs get done. Um, I think that the, the true reality of what's happening and the future is starting to sink in and our proposition has teeth. You know, it, it, it is being heard in a way for the first time that I've never seen it heard in the past, that before it was a novelty, um, you know, and it was often compared to gambling. And I, even recently, six months ago, I was getting that. I'm not getting that anymore. Um, when you talk about gambling, what gambling? I, I don't see any. I don't see any sports gambling. <laughs> um, you have online casino games, but that was always there. Um, I don't see any sports gambling happening. So, kind of gets rid of that part of the conversation, and the ability to raise non-recourse funds. So, uh, this women's basketball league told me very specifically they want to be number one. They understand the value of being number one. They want to be the first ones went through all the risks and rewards, covered the regulatory. I, they asked me, what is the risk? I said, the risk is purely regulatory. But I think in this environment, given the need, um, that that is not what it was. If we put out, and I said, we have not done a live fundraise before. We're, we're actively and aggressively farming for the first one. First one gets forever bragging rights, gets special conditions, all kinds of things, because what we want is the new story to throw out the news story that we can uh, walk into this gap and, and, and help stop the collapse of sports and then widen that message out to the broader economy and the benefits, then, then that's it. That's the win for us. You know, that's the payoff. We just need the news story. So he understood that uh, and agreed that it's not likely, uh, not only because if we do the job and do it correctly and, and solve the problem, um, that's one part, but also that they're going the regulators are going to be engaged in firefighting, uh, in these kinds of market environments, frauds are everywhere. So, and he agreed with that. They're going to be chasing that around, um, in the crypto space in the stock markets in the, in derivatives. I mean, it's just, it's fires everywhere. And I've seen coverage on this 
from uh, uh, some of the securities newsletters I subscribe to, and that is in fact what is happening. So this is our moment in time, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I can feel it in my bones every day. It's growing. The need for our product is growing. You know, our offering is growing every single day by itself. So it's just a matter of time before we get that first one that agrees and signs a term sheet and we publicize that. And then that's, that's a, a positive news story in a very negative environment. And, and I, we know how to get that out. We have the press footprint. We know how to reach into that and get that news covered. So that's where we stand. And if you want to give us a hand, if you want to support the budget uh, in the body of, of, of the updates, you're, you're, we'll see links from time to time. Um, we've cut everything down as literally to, to, to nothing. I mean, as far down as, as you could possibly imagine. Um, no luxuries, no, no frivolous, nothing. Every single dollar has been, basically, I brought all the expenses to zero and then put them back on one at a time. Uh, qualifying each one as to whether or not it was really needed. And I've gone so far as to um, get my bank to, the company bank, to um, to take our monthly service charge to zero. So we don't even pay for a checking account, a business checking account anymore. That's how closely everything is being watched. Um, I respect, you know, your finances just as much. I mean, I'm doing the same thing I would do uh, if every single dollar was my last dollar. So nothing gets wasted. I, I know it's difficult for everybody, but if you want to help out there, you know, it's not going to be every single time, but you'll see a link every now and then. Um, and then if you contribute once uh, at all, any amount, then I, then you'll be moved on to a list where you'll get the re uh, earlier reporting on information that is happening. And you'll also get uh, special access to things and you'll get uh, detailed reporting on that, uh, on the budgets in and out. So, and also all of the stuff that I get from like Hero Club and all of that, which pertains to just business and personal survival during this uh, once in a hundred year event, which is which is exactly what we're dealing with. So stay safe with your uh, friends and your family. And thank you very much for your time. And I will report again um, next Sunday. Bye now.